So today I'm joined by Mark Lassoff. He is uh, the founder of Learn to Program Media. The website is learntoprogram.tv. As the name suggests, they do online programming training. And um, yeah, Mark, uh, excited to have you on today. So thanks for joining me. I appreciate the invitation. So, um, of course, uh, as I said, in the news, um, programming in education is a big topic for, for kids. Then also many schools over here in Europe, but in the US also want uh, that teachers know uh, at least the basics of programming. And of course, for everybody who is a lifelong learner, um, I guess it's not really a question, but something that you uh, probably should, maybe even have to do, is uh, to have at least some basic knowledge of uh, how to code, and um, which hopefully then sparks an interest and you might want to pursue this. I think for you, the way was a little bit uh, different, but um, Maybe in a nutshell, tell me um, from your very personal point of view, what is so exciting about knowing how to program? Well, I think programming is really part of modern literacy. So much of our lives are consumed in the world of the digital. Uh, we have people walking around constantly using apps on their cell phones, using tablets as they commute, using computers all day at the office. And never in a time have we consumed so much digital media without understanding the science and underlying techniques to develop the media that underlie all of it. If you think about it, many of us spend our entire day consuming products that are programmed yet we don't understand how this programming occurs. So I think it's important as a consumer and as a citizen to understand the basic programming process and to uh, just to be a better consumer of the digital world. Just like, you know, if you visit your doctor, if you understand some basic biology and chemistry, you're going to be a better advocate for your own treatment. So I think the same is true with our highly digital world, that you need to program a little bit to understand it. And um, when it comes to education, um, whether I think you work quite a bit together with um, sort of the more entrepreneurial educators, whether you want to call them uh, edupreneurs or maybe teacherpreneurs that we definitely have as uh, viewers or readers on EduQuest or also startup people. I mean, just a couple of weeks ago, you, for instance, men um, mentioned that you mentored at Startup Weekend uh, EDU in, uh, in New York. Um, what do you think in an, in an educational context um, the interested teacher, the interested parent, or of course also um, to an extent um, kids. Uh, what do you really have to to know when you want to start off? What are really you would say the the points you should pay attention to? Well, uh, we look at it as several different paths when you're learning development. And there's a path that teaches the basics that underlies just about everything you would do as a programmer or developer. So that's the place to start. And those can be learned in a number of different languages. But learning and understanding things like variables and different ways to store data, conditionals and loops, the foundations of all programs, I think is critical for just about everybody. And just as, you know, years ago, I remember when I was in middle school, and I'm, I'm 40, so we're going back over 25 years, you know, there was a push for kids to become computer literate by learning a word processor, a spreadsheet, etc. I think that this basic programming literacy needs to be added to those topics, not just because we want our kids to grow up and be better consumers of digital media and programs, but also because we need programmers. Um, there's a shortage of good programmers here in the U.S., and unfortunately, that uh, has led to 
I think a, um, a a at least here in the U.S. a lot of outsourcing of our development to other places that could be done here just as easily. And it's a great career track for kids. You know, we teach every kid in the U.S. biology, chemistry, and most of them take some physics. Well, you know, these are what we keep calling the STEM professions. But 72% of the STEM jobs I've heard are going to be in computing. Yet that's the area in which we educate the least. So we need to bring back, not just for literacy's sake, but a balance between the sciences that we're teaching and the sciences that people are going to be working in as part of their professional career later. And I can definitely confirm that uh, this is not only a pro problem in the United States, but uh, of course also here in the uh, big cities, if you take uh, London or Paris or Berlin, that there is definitely maybe not as critically of a lag as uh, what we always hear of uh, about San Francisco or Silicon Valley, a lack of uh, programmers, but it definitely um, also exists as a problem uh, over here. So I think um, this outsourcing you mentioned happens in Europe as well, whether you take um, programmers from, from Russia or Bulgaria. Um, and as you said, uh, of course, we could and probably, or not only probably, but uh, should um, also educate our students to um, to do this ourselves or themselves and become programmers. So um, how would you tackle the the problem you spoke of um, understanding the principles there is a very or there are various different ways how to do it now we often hear about um, apps teaching or claiming that they can at least uh, build some of the foundations and teach kids how to to code. Um, for instance, in our news, um, there was um, or there is one startup uh, basically developing a graphical language through building blocks, and then we have these nice uh, robots um, starting in kindergarten that might help. Then you have um, programming courses, of course. Um, how would you guide parents or also teachers in selecting the right mix of uh, tools, apps, courses? Um, is there also, there are some guidelines uh, we could apply. Yeah, I think, you know, first of all, age appropriateness is the most important. If you have younger kids, the idea of logical thinking and algorithmic problem solving is really where you want to get across. Not so much the ideas of syntax and language, because those are going to vary depending on the environment in which someone is programming. So if you start, I mean, as early as kindergarten with these ideas of a systematized approach to problem solving, breaking problems down into their component parts, looking at the world to some degree in a um, perspective of objects and classes and classification, all are computer science and programming skills. You're finding ways to catalog data, are computer science skills. So if we're teaching those in the primary grades, when kids get to middle school, they're ready for some of the representational or graphic programming languages like you just described, where they can drag items around and learn the skills of programming. It's our belief here at Learn to Program that by the time kids get to high school, they're starting to explore career experiences and should be programming in the real languages. We often recommend they start with HTML and CSS, go on to JavaScript, and a lot of uh, schools that use our program go exactly through those steps. And then in college, you know, it's time to be doing real problem solving with the programming languages that are used out there in, in, in the real world. Um, again, starting with those foundational skills that, you know, can be taught as early as kindergarten and first grade of problem solving, and then moving into the syntactical skills and representational problem solving with a coding language in, in high school. We think that's the, the optimal progression. I know there's a lot of different ways and methodologies people have come to teach programming. Um, and, you know, my baseline for success is when they're done, can they write a program that does something? 
Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, frankly, I think from what I've seen, the results are all over the board. And I think some of the big players who've received the most media play and maybe have the sexiest approach may not necessarily have the most effective approach. So let's talk uh, a little bit about this because this, uh, what you just said, um, having the right approach for a person that um, has definitely an interest in learning about these principles and maybe also starting off with uh, little projects, practical projects of uh, how to simply get some of their thoughts in code and then to come out with um, a little project or program was actually um, a couple of weeks back the foundational um, thing uh, when we started to talk uh, with you and your team and Chris and I how we could actually realize something along these lines um, for the EduQuest audience of certainly um, uh, well adult learners I would say entrepreneurs in education and to come up with a course for them uh, that would initiate them and teach them some of these um, principles and well over the course of the past couple of weeks we actually have come up with something for you um, which uh, we called understanding programming a primer and well it will actually do exactly um, what the title says um, Mark is, I think, the right person to tell you a little bit more about the actual elements this course has and um, what we are hoping uh, you will achieve taking the course. So I give it to you, Mark. Right. So the course that we've developed together is designed to provide the foundational knowledge of the basic level or what I call the kind of the first path in learning programming. Those foundational skills that will more or less apply regardless of what programming environment that you're working in or regardless of what language you're using. We happen to use a language called Python for the course but it really doesn't matter because what we're teaching is the basic syntax and processes of developing simple programs. It's a foundational point from which you can expand and start developing more serious, uh, you know, market-ready applications. So the series is going to have several parts, and in each part we'll teach a different component of programming. And it's really not designed for you kind of to just read and, and, and to consume, but actually to code along with the tutorial and write the code as we do and uh, really ensure that the the learning transfer takes place. I'm a big believer that you learn programming by programming, not by watching others do it. It's a lot like driving. Um, so we've designed this series to take you through those very uh, basic parts of programming and give you an exposure to the terminology, the process, and some of the rudimentary tools that are used to develop software. Um, now, you won't be able to develop full-fledged web applications or full-fledged mobile applications after this uh, short course with EduQuest. But what you will be able to do is understand the programming process and then apply this to your learning later. Um, you know, at Learn to Program, we teach basically three paths. We teach, once people have the basics, a web development path, in which people can develop web applications, everything from blogs to e-commerce, a mobile development path for people to develop mobile apps, and a game development path for people to develop games. All three of these have the underpinnings in what we're teaching together with EduQuest in this series. So the series is designed to be a very basic level education in programming. Um, and furthermore, we even have uh, some lab exercises that will be available if you want to challenge yourself and really make sure that uh, your learning moves into that long-term storage inside your brain. And I think this is very in, uh, important to um, underline once again. Um, we 
want to bring you this course because we know that it's an important topic in education these days already and will only become more important um, of course um, over the the years to come so we we think that we want to target the interested learner with this and whether you are an entrepreneur in education and want to I guess get a better understanding of what your developers actually do. <laughs> or right, right. Yeah, sometimes, sometimes I say, you know, this course is good to know whether or not your programmers are lying to you. That's a very good point there. <laughs> I like that. Or maybe if you're working in a more um, traditional context in um, an organization together with educators or even if you are in a school setting and just want to understand um, the principles behind what your students uh, will actually have to learn and maybe as Mark just said uh, maybe or hopefully it will spark your interest and you want to challenge yourself and uh, do some of these uh, challenges Mark uh, referred to or maybe even then realize that um, this initial introductory course was so much fun that you want to take another course, a more profound um, course where you are really working on um, I think transferring some of the ideas you might want to have and um, then really build a pro product um, over the course of the next couple of weeks or, or months I think is realistic. So um, yes, we want to also access and um, give as many people as we can the opportunity to uh, learn with uh, how to program and uh, well uh, take this course on EduQuest and therefore we give um, this course away absolutely for free and from Monday on, so Monday, Monday the 12th of May, you will be able to um, access this course on EduQuest via our newly launched um, academy. And we are very excited that Mark's course is actually the first course in the new EduQuest Academy and uh, I think yeah that's a good sign and uh, we are really proud that um, well Mark's company wanted to work together with us on this and um, yeah we hope that well you will all enjoy um, this first course and the next to come and um, Yes, of course, we, we then want to hear your feedback and what you think of it. So all of the elements, once again, will be available for free. And um, Mark, do you suggest to take it step by step? Or can people binge learn uh, with the course? Uh, is there a certain methodology you would like to give them um, at hand? Well, I don't, I don't want to start a debate over learning styles, but I will say what I found is best is to really digest one lesson at a time, which is why we're publishing over a series of weeks. It's give people a chance to kind of finish a lesson, digest it, understand the material, and then go on to the next one. Because to a large degree, programming requires a spiral knowledge approach, where what you learned in week three is highly dependent on what you learned in weeks one and two. I think the most important thing is to have fun with it, experiment, try different things. You can't break a computer by programming. So, you know, if, if you mess up, it's thing. So keep trying to do new and more interesting things based on what you learn. You know, in week one, you're just we're just going to get you started. You're going to write your first program. You're going to set up your environment. But I purposely put you in an environment that you probably haven't worked in before. So you'll be working in the command line, which will be a new experience for many people, but it does make you feel like you're that much closer to the processor and the real computing that goes on. And I think it'll be a good experience for just about anyone who wants to become familiar with the programming process. Very nice. And uh, 
of course, I encourage everybody to check out what um, Mark does uh, with Learn to Program. So once again, the the website is learn to program TV. Otherwise, Mark is all over social media. I think. Uh, uh, the easiest is always to reach out uh, on Twitter to at M Lessoff with double S and double F. Um, and uh, yeah, once again, so we really think that we have come up with um, something instructional um, for the interested beginner or maybe false beginner even and um, that will really set the foundation for everything you might want to pursue uh, later on and um, yeah once again please give us feedback about uh, what you like and if you find it uh, challenging enough and um, see how um, yeah, I guess also um, if you come up with little projects um, and so on, that would be awesome um, to hear. And that's it for this episode. I have to thank my guest, um, Mark Lessoff, so much for coming on today and telling us more about um, understanding programming and, uh, of course, uh, the course the team has come up with. And uh, it was a pleasure having you. And um, have a great weekend. Well, thank, thank you. Thank so you. Much. Enjoyed it. Bye bye.